This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, so we got a freezer here. It's a little bit warm. Kind of going in here and seeing what we got going on. Coil is completely warm. Train line looks a little plug full of crud. So what's going on down below? And of course, this is R290, so sure it's nothing to do with refrigerant. That's not good. Of course, we got everything all gummed up in here. Train line's hooking me up there. That's going to that. All right, coil's clean. Ow. Oh, crap. I would say it's pr probably leaking. We're not hot at all here. Discharge coming out of the compressor is warm. But we're losing all the heat just in that water right there. We're going to go ahead and turn it off. Try to take a look here. I'm going to go grab my detector. We might just spray it. But that didn't just happen. So it comes in on that back one. It come out here, goes into there, comes out on this middle one, comes to here, comes to there, loops up to there, comes to there and up to here. So I mean, we could jump some of this, but my gosh, it's kind of important. Maybe what we have to do, because as bad as that's smashed, I don't, I don't know any good way to repair that. I mean chop it all off and extend it or something that just is ridiculous they need to buy a new coil we turn it back on figure muzzle see if it can create some compression make a bubble of some sort got no hits i mean even if that ain't where the leak's at it surely is not letting no refrigerant with a squat through there i know i've had this thing go off before on big blue but I rinsed it off with some water. I'm on at the edge here a little bit. It's not picking up anything down there, but I'm getting a hit there. I don't think it's soaked because I come down here to this part there. It's not going off on any of that. But you get right there to that. Increases that. It gets it. Go ahead and turn it back off again. All right, the correct way to do this is to put a cap on it, and drain it out slowly with your leak detector running nonstop. Just barely got anything left of it, so I'm going to uh, just make a small cut in it, move a little bit, cut it a little bit bigger, and wait a little bit. So don't do it the way I'm doing it. Do it the way they recommend. Otherwise, you gotta worry about the fryers that are running over there. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing cut. We're gonna bleed this thing out, and then we're gonna have to try to embrace some of these pieces down here on the end. Went ahead and finished cutting it. Nothing hard came out at all. There's a little bit of a shh. And that's it. So like I said, don't you don't want to cut it like I I did on a normal system. Once again, I'm not petrified of it like we were at first. Just kind of respect it, but you don't have to be scared to death of it. I'm gonna go ahead and chuck it up into this spin sweat, just baby. Simple, and then it don't spin on you, so works out pretty good. We're gonna put one on both sides that way we can blow through it while we're brazing it. Um, it's not under warranty, so I probably won't remove it. Yes, it's supposed to be removed. We're just breaking all kinds of rules today. It's not under warranty. Fact is, we got to come back and replace that condenser. It's it's going to run high head pressure, so it's stupid to take them off. And honestly, it's a given that the evaporator is going to leak here for long anyway. We ain't going to remove them, not right away, if at all. Real life.
is to run our nitrogen through and then uh, we have to undo some of that stuff. It should be a lot of fun. We'll replace fill the dryer and all that crap when we come back. All right, so we're gonna bleed some nitrogen through here on the high side, push it through the capillary tubes, through the coil that's all screwed up. Should be able to get some uh, bubbles now that we get some pressure on it. Even if I don't, this is not right. Oh God, yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah, there's your leak. <laughs> Plainest day. So we're gonna follow that one there. I'm not so worried about that one there. It's not horrible. Comes in, goes back through the middle. Middle comes to here and goes to that one. That's one of the ones that's really bad. So we're gonna have to pull this one apart here. All right, so we went ahead, a little tricky. I don't have my tripod with me, so I can't really record it. But what I end up doing, getting on there with my needle nose pliers and just wait till it's definitely warm. You probably could cut it and then pull one out at a time would be easiest but I did both of them at the same time. So what we're gonna do, since we know that it goes through that one, comes back there, we don't need these two here. We're gonna go ahead and smash these down. That way I don't accidentally hook them up. We got a few more of those out of there. Studying what we've got going on over here because it's kind of back and forth, back and forth. Got our 180 bender. We've already got us one right here, so we're gonna cut that and uh, Get her jumped from here to there and there to there. All right, so we got something kind of built here that should match up. So we'll get that pushed into place and get it soldered in. And then uh, we've got one more here. So this is really generic, but just keep in mind we're only doing this to get us by. I don't know how easy it's going to be to get the condenser coil. Going to need to be slid in there very gently, uh, getting that tight bend two fingers three fingers wide not real easy because it's either wider or you can't hit the uh, bracket to hold it in place so it's kind of kind of something else but should work uh, i haven't done it on nothing this small before we got her braised in don't want to get too crazy on it because otherwise you might end up braising her shut so so we're going to go ahead and pressurize and see if it goes through the system. It's coming through, so it means it's going from one side to the other. Go ahead and put a cap on it and let's do a pressure test to see if we're leaking on the uh, braze joints. We added a little bit of braze here on the ends that had a little dent on this one here and this one here it does not appear we're leaking anything on there now this thing ran for who knows how long with no refrigerant in it so it may have already baked the oil and the crap's going to get plugged in the capillary tube so this thing might be junk no way to know but we're going to pull back on it and see what we get and if it runs great we'll get a new oil if not we'll have to dump the oil <clears throat> replace the capillary tube and the condenser what a great deal that's if the compressor holds up. So, let's see what we got here. All right, this gives me a chance to show off the JB gauges I've got here. They're analog. You can see they're the small, I don't know if you want to call it eighth inch hoses. They're very short and small. Uh, they are for R600, 32, and R290, which already has it on the gauge. I like analog sometimes. So, um, to do this, we're kind of like not going to be doing it real quickly because we're using it through the Schrader cores. We do have the micron gauge on there, which I just put my T that I use for my uh, stubby gauges. It's not idea. I mean, obviously the fastest would be with bigger hoses, but if you want something easy sleazy and get it done and not lose any refrigerant, this is the gauge set that you want. And for doing a check or something like that, you're gonna you're not gonna lose very much here. I do got a isolation valve here so I can dump my high side back into the system. And uh, now it does not come with that. I had to add that one there. But the screw-on fittings is, uh, they screw on really nice. They have this swivel thing here. They're all made in America. It's just better. So, I mean, it's definitely a direct competitor with Yellow Jacket. Um, Yellow Jacket's good stuff too. The JB is just good from what I'm seeing. I've got one of their stubby gauges here too that I've been using lately and TreeTech Tools sells both of them. 
So I've been using that lately. Uh, it's pretty much the similar gauge. That goes to five, this goes to 350. I use this for my low pressure switches because I lost my other older one. But thought I'd show you guys that. Uh, I'll have a link down in the description down below. But we're gonna do this the way that most guys tend to do and uh, get this thing pulled down. So put on our high side here. So we start pulling through on our low, which we already know that it's been uh, going from one side to the other. Starting to go, so we know we're open, which we already knew that anyway from purging the nitrogen. It's gonna take a lot longer because we're using these tiny hoses, but it's really for demonstration purposes and an alternative thing out there if you guys don't want to use the big hoses, if you don't want to use regular manifold, if you want a dedicated set. I mean, it's something to consider, something to look into, but that's what we got going on. And you'll kind of see how long it takes. All right, I didn't check my clock, but it's got to have been maybe five minutes, and we're at 7,000 microns. This is taking forever. I think I'm just going to go ahead and put that on there, and uh, it's getting it, but it's just not very fast, that's for sure. All right, I couldn't help it, but we had to switch them back. It's, they're going to be great for charging. That's probably all they're going to be good for. They're probably actually labeled for that, but I figured I'd give it a shot just to see. It's not worth it. Um, yeah, I mean, we're pulling the majority since we're right at the fitting there. Once we valve it off, we'll know our true microns, but this is less than 20, 30 seconds. So you can figure about how fast it's going to speed it up. All right, so I've valved this off once. We're going to close our valves a little bit to get the air out from underneath of it. And then uh, watch what happens. I mean, it's going to shoot up. That's why you can't put your gauge at your vacuum pump. But what we're going to do is we're going to watch it and we're going to see where it's at and how it um, starts to slow down. If it starts to slow down, that's a good sign. That means we've just got either refrigerant or moisture in there. If it keeps going, that means we have a leak. So while I'm waiting for that to pull down, I did have a gas valve ordered for this thing. These stupid switches are not the most reliable thing. The uh, one here, you just barely tap it, it cut in and cut out. So we're gonna go ahead and get that changed out. Union, of course, is all the way back here, so get that changed. Just trying to keep busy while I'm waiting. Nothing exciting here, just drop the pipe some pro dope on there and thread her back on and use the backup pipe wrench. All right, it's been pulling for quite a while. Valve it off, it's still going up. It's slowing down, but yeah, this is the problem with some of these units. They get ran for a day and a half with no refrigerant and they just get chewed up so filter dryer needs to be changed yet that's going to help some you can tell it's already slowing down down to eight microns a second from 14 so that's a mixture between some moisture and some refrigerant in there i'll go ahead and get that changed and get her going get everything ready to go here then it's going to chew it up ready to go so we're gonna go ahead and get her weighed in. I have to use my phone to weigh it in since I don't have my regular gauges and uh, we'll get her weighed into the factory charge, which is a whopping 4.3 ounces. Woohoo. So I've done other videos. If you guys are curious how I unhooked it and stuff like that, just basically valved it off. Once I had pressure in it, then I put the Schrader core into it. Then I removed the valve core tools. So that's how I do it. And I wait till the pressure's positive on my gauge. Blue vacs aren't easily destroyed by pressure or anything like that, like some of the other gauges that are out there. That's why I've been using them forever. Let's turn on, see if this thing runs, hopefully. There it goes. We can see firsthand what's it doing. And it's going to run the fan one direction, and it's going to run the fan the other direction. If my gauges are in the way. There we go. higher head pressure and we probably gonna need a little less refrigerant too. Yeah, I have a bad feeling we're gonna go into a negative. Yeah capillary tubes are gonna be all screwed up. That's some 
Missouri. So it's starting to come up. I didn't quite get the four ounces in there. It's this thing was pretty much about empty. I sucked in as much as I could. I got it down to like five pounds area right there. So uh, we're only running about 82 degrees in here. So it's at least 70 to 73 in here. So we should be at least 10 to 15 over. So I'm gonna add a little bit more to it and see where we're at. We're running right now at 20, uh, about 30 degree evaporator below. So we're not off by much. We also gotta remember too, when we dump the high side in, which now we don't have much liquid at all in here, so it's not gonna be such a big deal as what it normally would be, but when we dump that in there, it will come up some. You can see up here by valving that off for about seven pounds. Dump this here in. That brings us up to almost 10 pounds. So there's about three pounds difference there, which then puts us at almost a negative 25 evaporator. This just is a freezer, so it's probably just about a half an ounce low right yet. We should be good to go. Uh, luckily, we're not having any real heat issues. Uh, it's not that hot. This charge line's hot. It goes down into that little curly curl down there. Comes out, it's not very hot. I mean, it's definitely warm, but not like burning hot. And it's going through the that, uh, condenser here, and it's doing pretty good there. So, I'm gonna grab me a little bit more. Uh, I have to go with the other brand, but it's all the same once it's rated for 290. So that's kind of the contraption I came up with to hold it inverted for liquid. Running right in there at about uh, 89 degrees. And we're at 12 degrees. Uh, this usually goes for negative 10 to zero. Surprisingly, it's not running a super high head pressure, honestly. Um, I put in just about the exact amount. We have four uh, straight quarter inch tubes that are missing out of 27. So if you use the count across, there's a total of 27 tubes. So four of them are missing. It's not probably as bad as it seems, but uh, I did put just a little under the 4.3. I put it right at about four. Um, we are at zero degrees. So I'm gonna dump this back in there, what we got left, and uh, wrap this thing up. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one. Later.